Former Deputy Finance Minister Kazel uh, to Fossen says the position of the NDC, uh, the position the NDC has taken on government reversal of benchmark value discount is uh, deceptive and pedestrian. Well, that is not Kazel to Fossen, but that is the NDC. The NDC at a news conference described the move by government as draconian and one that will worsen the living condition of Ghanaians. But in response, the Deputy uh, Finance Minister John Kuma said the NDC's position is uninformed. Kweku Asante joins us on Zoom uh, with more on this. Kweku, uh, what point does the Deputy Finance Minister make to buttress his point that the NDC's position is shallow and pedestrian? All right, Ernest. So the Deputy Attorney General, um, a Deputy Minister for Finance, John Kuma, makes some points. For instance, he says that the NDC themselves do not seem to have read their own manifesto of 2020, for which reason some of the points they've raised do not buttress some of the arguments they've been making prior. First, he says that in the NDC's manifesto, they claimed that they were going to put in place measures to support local industries. But if they are against the removal of the benchmark values, then they are not supporting local industry because we know that the AGI and others have always made the point that the benchmark values discount is stifling the growth of local industries. And so by removing them, then you can make them competitive enough to compete with all these people who are importing all sorts of goods into the country. And so that's the first point John Kuma makes there. Mm. But he continues to say that in terms of economic management, in terms of economic growth, the MPP has a certain better blueprint which they are using and which they are trying to use to manage the economy. And so the NDC has seemed to have lost sight of all these parameters and indicators for which reason it is against it. But government is saying and is insisting actually that they have taken this decision in the best interest of the Ghanaian economy. Mm. And the Deputy Minister reiterates government's position that the reversal will bolster local industries. He gives particular details. Right. So we know that the AGI and others seem to have been on the same page that when it comes to removing these discounts, then what you are doing is that local industries are going to get enough fund, they're going to get enough resources to be able to compete locally. Mm -hmm. What the Deputy Finance Minister, Mr. John Kuma, is saying is that the government, by removing these discounts, the, the, the revenues that are going to come into the system, some of them are going to be pumped back into the economy. We know that government has been on an aggressive industrialization agenda using the one district, one factory. And so they are seeking that as a measure or as a catapult to ensure that the local industries are boosted and they get the kind of resources they need to be able to produce the maximum things Ghanaians need. You know that one, issues, one issue that others have raised is that the local industries do not have the capacity to produce all that Ghanaian needs. For instance, in terms of sugar, we don't produce sugar locally. And so those who are against the benchmark discount should move and say that, so how are we going to get our sugar? People are still going to import anyway. But the finance ministry is saying now that they are going to ensure that the one district, one factory, another industrialization agenda that government have put in place will lead to this. Uh, and Kweku, finally, he also responds to the other uh, economic claims by the NDC, including the fact that government is desperate and needs to show up its revenue and make its books look good. Right. So we know that the NDC have been saying that, for instance, the vice president, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, is changing his stance. He's no longer an economic measure. He's turning into an industrial, uh, uh, industrialization and also digitalization giant. What the finance ministry is saying through Mr. John Kuma is that the NDC do not have the moral authority to speak about the economy because the NDC reference at that press conference, what they say is government's appetite for taxes. And they are saying that the finance ministry, that the NDC during its period in government put a lot of taxes on the ordinary Ghanaian. They had to pay for condom taxes, machetes and other things. And so the NDC has lost that moral right to complain about taxes. The NDC has also been talking about poor prices that are going up what they say is the reflection of the poor economic indicators in the country. That is also something that the Deputy Finance Minister John Kuma has taken on significantly to argue that the NDC during their uh, time frame was in office between 2009 and 2016 did more 
in terms of increasing forward prices that they have done. And so yeah, that kind of political analysis and political comparison also featured in that long write-up by the Deputy Finance Minister, John Kuba. Well, good. Thank you for bringing us those details. Let's get a reaction from the uh, NDC and uh, let's go to Parliament and speak to John Ginapo, who is a member of the Finance Committee. Uh, he joins us. Thank you very much, sir, for your time here on Joining News Prime. Now, uh, this was part of the issues the NDC uh, had with the 2022 budget. Uh, you do not seem to have succeeded with the negotiation with the Finance Minister. But certainly, certainly, because when you go into negotiation, it's a give and take. The finance minister is maintaining an intransigent position. He doesn't want to shift. He doesn't want to even reduce his levy by even one percentage point, not even one percentage point. And so when you go into negotiation and one side decides that I'm not moving an inch, certainly you cannot make progress. Mm. That is one. Two is that this whole issue about benchmark revenue has not been well thought out. You are supposed to reverse a benchmark value that will lead to a 30% increment. But yesterday you heard the importer. Yeah. You are experiencing about 100% increment. That has led to the finance ministry and GRS suspending that decision. So therefore it tells you that consultation hasn't gone down well. It tells you that the finance minister should change his position. He alone cannot be a repository of knowledge and that he should consult further so that we can carry this country together. Mm. But from what I'm seeing, if it continues on that tangent, if it continues on that trajectory, I can assure you it's going to face all these challenges that they are facing. Well, well, we well, want this country to be governed, but he must learn to consult, and he must learn to also give way. Beyond the negotiations in Parliament, your party has also been speaking to this, and the Finance Ministry has responded to uh, the claims the party is making. Sami Jafi addressed the news conference saying that, you know, uh, government needs to withdraw this completely. John Kumar says this is completely shallow, it is pedestrian, ill-informed. Uh, how do you respond to this? This is about the people of Ghana. That is the most important thing. With the reversal of these benchmark revenues, what would be the impact on the ordinary Ghanaian? What would be the impact on the ordinary farmer who wants to import a Kia truck, which is not being assembled or manufactured in Ghana, to cut his goods so that he can be competitive? What would be the impact when it comes to like tricycles that in my constituency people need on a daily basis to move goods and services? That is the crux of the matter. It's not even about whether somebody says ABC. They are in government. We are not in government. The reversal of these benchmark revenues affects ordinary tricycles. It affects ordinary vehicles that we need. We are not talking of luxury vehicles. Even if we are talking of luxury vehicles, that's a different matter. We are talking of everyday vehicles that people need to move goods and services. What will be the impact on those people? And the finance minister should look at those issues and deal with them. Look, what was the reason for suspending parliament? It was for further consultation on e-levy. Was that not the case? Mm. Has the finance minister consulted anybody in parliament since that day? You are there. Tell us. I'm telling that I'm a member of the finance committee. Nobody has even reached out to us. Mm. Nobody has reached out to any member of the finance committee that, look, we have this law, this period before the 25th, because I'm told parliament uh, recall has been extended to 25th. Let's meet, let's discuss the issues, let's deliberate on the matter. So that even before we get to the chamber, would have dealt with a lot of the concerns. Nothing has happened. But so Mr. Jean, the, 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 point government makes, the point government makes about boosting you know, local production, and for instance, if you look at the automotive industry, there have been uh, some significant steps that have been taken uh, to make sure that that industry grows. Um, are you saying that it is not that that is not sufficient to, to uh, uh, as a basis for the withdrawal? Are not manufactured or assembled here in Ghana. Here, trucks are not assembled or manufactured here in Ghana. Tricycle, they just bring them as knocked down here. And and when you come to my constituency, for instance, these tricycle, these uh, what others call a buboya, they call pragya. They are for everyday movement. They are not assembled here in Ghana. No factory in Ghana produces sugar. 
You had Commander Factory. The past five years, you haven't resuscitated it. You haven't done anything to it. And yet, you are reversing all those values on basic commodities like sugar. If we're talking of things like poultry, things like rice, I'm sure we can all engage and discuss those issues. Mm. But if you don't hide under the cover of local production and extend it to all goods that are neither produced here or assembled here in Ghana, go and look at the list. I've seen the list. Yeah. A lot of the products are neither produced or manufactured here. To some of those products are inputs. That's why I said that the ordinary farmer will need a truck. The yeah. contractor will need a deeper truck in order to move F moving equipment and those things. Tell me which factory here manufactures deeper truck in Ghana. Well, Mr. So Mr. if you say that you are reversing it on all vehicles, mm -hmm. not a, a certain category of vehicle. And you tell us that because a certain company like Nissan assembles uh, saloon cars in Ghana, you are being deceptive. Well, we'll leave it here because of time, but we are grateful that you could join us. Uh, that's the uh, member of the Finance Committee of Parliament, John Ginapon.